Hello and good whatever time it is. This is Write Me in Film. Today I am giving spring recs for every genre. Okay, not every genre, but a lot of genres. And spring is literally next week, so I'm giving you a week's worth to go out and buy all these books because spring is here and we just need to get those spring vibes going. There are over 50 recs, um, so let's get into it. I have my little computer, my little headphones, my little mic, my uh, drink of choice is a cup of coffee, and if there's noise in the background, it's because my dog is playing with a treat. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. We have a lot to cover today. So before I start out with the genres, I wanted to give like 10 recommendations from my own vault of books that I have read myself. So we're going to go through each book. We're going to give what genre it is, a little bit about what it's about, and then why I think it's spring reading time. So first up, we have Lilac Girls. It's historical fiction. So it follows the lives of Caroline, Cassia, and Hertha during World War II, before, during, and after. So this book is just very hopeful. It's very feminine. It's set in spring in a lot of the books, and I feel like it just gives that feeling. Next up, we have Turtles All the Way Down, which is a YA contemporary. So this follows the story of Aza Holmes and her life living with mental health problems. And she tries to solve the disappearance of Russell Pickett with her best friend, Daisy. This is set in springtime-ish. It's like in between winter and spring. And it just, spring reminds me of hope. And I feel like this book gives a lot of hope, like, it's kind of like the melting of snow. Third up, I have Before the Coffee Gets Cold and Tales from the Cafe. There actually are two more. I just haven't been able to find them anywhere near me, but I've read the first two. So these are Magical Realism, and it's about a cafe that lets you go back in time and have a moment before the coffee gets cold. But there are a lot of rules. So it's set in the summertime, but I feel like it gives more spring aesthetic and this just reminds me of hope as i said before and i'll say it a million times again spring reminds me of hope it's when the seasons are changing and like it's becoming beautiful and the dead winter is melting and i feel like that these books just give that fourth i have better than the movies which is a ra ya rom-com so it follows liz during her senior year and she's experiencing love and grief and growing up and just navigating life it's around prom time so it actually is during the spring it just gives me happy giddy vibes fifth or is the sound of a wild snail eating it's a non-fiction memoir so this lady has an encounter with a snail and it kind of becomes her companion through this bed-ridden illness that she has. And it deals with animals and nature and it just gives spring and joy. Next up is The Problem with Forever, which is a YA contemporary romance. So this follows Mallory and she's navigating going to public school for the first time after she hasn't been to school since her traumatic life has started and she reconnects with a special person from her past. This deals with a lot of hope and growth, caring, and it's like a cozy sunshine type of book. Seventh, we have My Year with Eleanor, which is a memoir. So Eleanor Roosevelt, which it's kind of controversial on if she actually said this or if it was someone else's quote, but in the book, it says that she says, do one thing a day that scares you. And so this lady named Eleanor, she does that. She does one thing every day that scares her. I feel like this book is really about emerging and blooming and living your life and facing your fears and not letting your fears stop you from living your life and really just to just to start learning to be your true self and who you want to be and not be afraid of that. Seventh, we have The Great Gatsby and Beautiful Little Fool. So they're romance, classic, historical fiction books. So Great Gatsby is about new old money, new money versus old money, and the lifestyles following The Great Gatsby, Mr. J. Gatsby, and Daisy, and love, and life between them through Nick, who is the narrator and the background of all that beautiful little F fools is about the three girls so somebody else wrote it and it's kind of connected but it could almost be a separate read but i feel like you could still read them together and they are set in the summer but it kind of mixes mystery with 
summer vibes and I feel like that's spring. It's very much blossoming into a new life and just just becoming a woman and well specifically beautiful little fools. Becoming a woman and just like girl power without sounding cringy. Number nine is Paper Towns, which is a YA. So Quentin, he loves Margot. He's always loved Margot. Margot lives down the street. And she just has an adventurous spirit and he he just loves her from afar. So one night, their senior year of high school, they have this crazy adventure together and then she disappears the next day. And he decides he's going to go find her and it's the day of his graduation, and he convinces his friends to go with him, and it's just a fun spring adventure. And the final book on books that I have read that I think you could read in spring is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is a YA dystopian, and it follows the story of President Snow before, like, before the Hunger Games books, when he's in his teenage years slash 20s, and Lucy Gray Baird. So I would say specifically the District 12 parts our spring and I think Lucy Gray just embodies spring and I feel like that's why I, I added it. So the first genre we have is classics. Now all of these books and all books in general can be categorized into several different genres but I just put them each into one genre and they definitely cross over so you could read all these books and a lot of them follow similar genres but they're not necessarily in that category if that makes sense. As well a lot of them aren't like set in spring or they're like specifically just spring some of them aren't even set in spring at all it's just I feel like reading about them and picking them they just implement spring into the storyline whether it's just the essence or literally um and it's just kind of an interpretation where it can be in spring like obviously you can read them whenever you want but I feel like it'd just be fun to read in spring and I haven't read most of these. There's a few that I have read that I added anyway, but most of these I haven't added or read. So first up, we're starting with classics. So the first book is Anne of Green Gables, which follows the life of Orphan Anne Shirley and her growing up and getting adopted in that whole lifestyle. Not lifestyle, but her life. And I think it just... It represents like growth in childhood meadows and that makes me think of spring. Next up we have Little Women. So this follows the March sisters and their struggles during the Civil War and I feel like women are spring to me or those types of women are spring. Next up we have Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. So this follows Elizabeth Bennet and how she learns about superficial goodness versus actual, good, actual goodness. Again women, spring, growth. And then we have Romeo and Juliet. So this is the tragic love story of Romeo and Juliet. And I feel like all of Shakespeare's plays can categorize into a spring play or a winter play. And I feel like Romeo and Juliet is a spring play. The last classic that I have written down is The Secret Garden. So this follows Mary and she moves in with her uncle because she's a troubled kid and she finds the secret garden and it's the story of her in the secret garden and nature to me is just spring so that's why i put it on there next up is fantasy slash dystopian i put them together the first book is this is how you lose the time war so this is where there's a letter that says burn before reading and the person begins corresponding a correspondence between these two people like the person that wrote the letter and the person who received it and during the war and there are there are birds on the cover and that just reminded me of spring and I feel like war reminds me of winter spring if that makes sense the next book is evergreen which is about an annual gathering of kingdoms and it follows the commander of the shadow hunters so I chose this because the cover just looks very spring, the name looks spring, and it's involved in a forest, which is very spring. I also tried to choose books that weren't super popular, so that's why some of these books you may never have heard of, but I was really trying to find unique books that aren't very popular but still seemed interesting. The next book is At the Coffee Shop of Curiosities, so Ava gets a letter for an unusual job listing and she becomes a caretaker 
for this old man and there is a coffee shop involved the coffee shop of curiosities and the cover has a butterfly on it and that always reminds me of spring magical realism always reminds me of spring and i feel like hope and sorrow is also very spring like themes the next book is the first bright thing so this is about a ringmaster who can jump between different moments in time and when I think of the carnival, I just think of spring, and this concept just sounded really interesting to me, so I added it. The last book in this genre is The Surviving Sky, which is about a jungle planet floating in the sky, and it's a plant-made society. And this just sounded so cool, like the cover is so cool and imagining a, an entire realm just floating and it's like a giant tree and nature and it just looks so beautiful and fun next up we have thrillers sorry my chair is squeaking um next up we have thrillers so first up is not so perfect strangers so this is about two women so there's tasha and she left her abusive husband and she meets madison and I really struggle to find spring thrillers because in my head, thrillers aren't spring. They're like dark. So this one I found on a list of spring thrillers. It was like an article. I don't remember where the article was from. But the next book is Murder Under a Red Moon. So this is actually the second book in the series. And it's about a an investigation of a crime that occurred during the blood moon eclipse. This was also on that list. Again, I struggled to find thrillers. I don't really read thrillers, but I wanted to give it as an option because I know it's a big genre and a lot of people do read thrillers. Next up, we have Dirty Laundry. So this is about a group of moms where one of the moms is murdered and they try to solve the murder and they they air out a lot of dirty laundry and secrets between these women. And this just reminded me of spring cleaning, so I added it on there. Up fourth, we have We Were Liars. So this is about a family who is on a private island and an accident happens. I feel like islands are just spring. Like, when I think of an island, I think of spring because I think of, like, a jungle. I guess if I thought of a beach island, that'd be summer. But this one screams, sc screams spring to me. And finally, we have Double or Nothing. So 007 has been captured or killed, they don't know. And a new generation of spies have to save the world. This was also on the list, and it sounds kind of fun. Like 007, um, James Bond type, but kind of young and youthful. And I think spring represents youth. Like I said before, a lot of these are just my personal opinion. So if you don't think they give spring, then you don't have to read them or you can be angry at me. But next up we have mystery and I feel like thrillers and mystery kind of fall under the same category, but I did split them up. So first up we have Where the Crawdags Sing, which is about Kaya Clark, who is found to be a suspect of a murder because she's not to the people's societal standards. And so she just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And I feel like this book, I never watched the movie, but I watched the trailer and I felt like it was a very springy type of trailer. The next book on the list is With My Little Eye. And this is about a mom who moves her and her daughter across the country because she's trying to lose this stalker who will not leave her alone and they can't escape him. I feel like this is like a spring mystery. It's very rainy and rain is spring, so... Next, we have None of This is True. So this is about a lady who has a podcast, and she has this other lady on that she met, and they have the exact same birthday. And I feel like the cover gives spring. The fourth one is Killing Me, and this is about a girl named Amber who thinks she's going to be a serial killer's next victim and is being haunted. This kind of reminds me of the movie Split. I, I don't think he has split personalities, but it just reminds me of Split when they get kidnapped. And the cover is just fun looking, so I added it. Also, I'm giving very, very vague descriptions because we have a lot to go through, but if you want more descriptions i made a list of all of them on my goodreads so under one of the tags i have spring books and so i'll like link that below so you can just go right to it and 
read what you want so then you can get a better description but this is just to get you started the final mystery book is yellow face so this is about two authors and one has died in a freak accident and the other one steals the dead lady's unpublished work and publishes it as her own um this this cover is just yellow and i felt like it was springy moving on to non-fiction books the first book we have is made so this is about stephanie who is breaking from an abusive relationship and she's going to university to become a writer and she has a daughter and it kind of just follows along the process of her journey to getting to become a writer in college and what she has to go through and how she has to be a maid and all the different things she has to struggle with along the way. The next book is One More Croissant for the Road. Now this is a book about French dishes and I just thought the cover was so fun looking and I wanted to add some random fun books in here and I feel like nonfiction is a lot of people shy away from it because they think it's boring but I feel like you can find some really neat niche nonfiction books and this one just seemed like a fun spring book. Then we have Spring Rain. So this is a book that talks about how to find your peace in nature and just it's nature go get in nature. Fourth, we have What It's Like to Be a Bird, and this is a book about birds and answers questions that people have about them. And I feel like migrating home from the winter is spring, so I added it on there. The final nonfiction book I have is The Story of More. So this is a book about climate change, and it's not like political, controversial climate change. It's just like an information book on how we started, how climate has changed, and how it is now, how we got here, and what we can do now for our future. And I think this is a good book to read in the spring because it literally deals with our earth and the nature and everything about it. I keep having to stop like every five minutes because my dog is playing with something loud so apologies but next up is romance so the first book i have is the little bookshop of lonely hearts so the owner of this bookstore dies and this girl named posy is who she left it to and she has to take over and transform the bookshop i saw this cover and i just thought it was literally adorable and the book sounds really cutesy so that's why i added it Next, we have Pick Picking Daisies on Sundays. So this is about childhood friends that kind of drifted apart, and this is them rekindling as adults. I picked this solely for the cover. Like, doesn't that just scream spring? That just looks so, so cute. Um, next is the Bromance Book Club. So this is, a, is about a story about a book club for men, and they read romance books, and then they implement the advice into their life and it's specifically about this one guy who is struggling with his marriage and the, they're baseball players and isn't baseball in the spring also look at the look at the cover it's so spring and just the story seems so fun and i think that it'd be fun to read the fourth book in the romance genre is all the Bi bright places so this is about theodore who is fascinated by death and violet who lives for the future and just wants to escape. She lives in Indiana and I can relate to her. So I chose this book solely because her name is Violet and that's like spring. I know this book is pretty sad. I watched a movie commentary on the movie, but I feel like sometimes spring is sad because it's so rainy and I feel like just on a rainy cozy day it would be a, a nice read. The last book in this genre is The Disenchantments. So this is about a group of people who plan to go on a road trip but then Bev one of the girls she cancels and decides to go to college and this was a recommended spring read if you see the cover I think it just looks like a fun read and yeah just seems fun okay moving on to our next genre is science fiction so first up we have the day tripper which is about a time traveler and I don't know why, but in my head, time travel equals spring. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Next is The Midnight Library, which I actually did read this book, but I did throw it in. So this is about a library where each book is 
a different life that you could have had depending on the decisions that you make and this book kind of just represents hope and I feel like spring is very hopeful as I've said 47 times then we have a psalm for the wild built this is a story about robots I'm kind of confused on what it's about in general but it's kind of a mix between robots and the nature and I chose it because of the cover then we have flowers for Algernon is that how you say it? I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. So this is about a boy who, his name is Charlie, and he was born with like an unusually low IQ and is the subject for an experimental surgery. And it's just, I chose it because the word flowers is in it, and I feel like it represents hope. And finally in this category, we have Dune. So this is about Paul and his journey towards his destiny. And I feel like series series are good to read in the spring because spring, at least where I live, there are so, so, so many rainy days in spring and you just sit inside. And I feel like cozying up to a whole series would be just so much fun. And I chose Dune because it's so hot and deserty that it combats with your real life winter dreary coldness and then you get spring. The next category is young adults. So first we have the perks of being a wallflower. So this is about Charlie who is a high schooler and specifically it's about him or it's not about him. He's writing letters to someone and that is how the book is written. So I feel like this book, I never read the book, but I have watched the movie and it really represents school well. I think it represents high school well and specifically someone who feels this way in high school and I think it represents hope. Next up is The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. So this is about four girls who can all wear one pair of pants even though they're all different sizes and this just reminds me of girlhood and girlhood is just fun and springy. Then we have Star Girl. So this is about a girl who appears at this high school and her name is Star Girl, and she just like changes everything in this high school and everyone is like in awe of her. I feel like the Star Girl, like you're just the shining star, you're stepping out, you're spring, and also Eden Faith on YouTube. This is like her favorite book ever and she talks about it all the time and I wanted to add it because I want to read it. Next we have Bridge to Terabithia, which is about Jess and Leslie and they create this enchanted world and magic magic is spring there's a lot of sadness and sorrow but i feel like this book represents snow melting and hope for better things and a different life and also good to read when it's raining the final book in this category this genre is beautiful creatures which i also have read i read in i think my freshman year of high school i read the whole series so this is about lena and she has to choose between goodness or evil because she has like these magical powers. And then there's Ethan who's just immortal and he's drawn to her and he wants to help her. And it just follows her choosing between good and bad. And then this um, Ethan who is just immortal and he kind of helps her through it and like shows her different sides of things. I feel like this book kind of represents spring emerging and Lena kind of represents spring emerging. and I think it's good to read in the spring at least the first one and you kind of like build your way through the story in the world the next genre is historical fiction so first up we have sarah's key which is about sarah who in 1942 was arrested with her family and then there's another side where it's 2002 about julia who is a journalist so this book is set in may which is literally spring and i just think the back and forth is nice to see different sides um how like it's historical fiction but then it's also present day and i think it's interesting when it's like that next is between shades of gray so this is about i have read this book is about um in high school it's about lena who is taken to siberia and forced to dig for beets and work during world war ii this book is a very hopeful book and it's a very nice ending and i think spring is very hopeful again then we have Number of the Stars. So this is about Anna Marie, and she has to go on this dangerous mission to help her best friend, Ellen, who is in hiding because she is Jewish. And this is during World War II. 
this is just a cute little little fun not fun but it's a nice book about two best friends at, on the younger side and i think like little kids are springy and hopeful and just children then we have fourth the berry pickers so this is about a four-year-old who goes missing in a blueberry field in maine and then it taught it's about the mystery and it hasn't been solved in over 50 years and look at the cover just is spring fruit is spring and it's in maine and i feel like maine is spring as well so that's why i put it on here the last book in historical fiction is the invisible life of Addie LaRue. So this is in 714, 1714, Addie decides to live forever. In exchange, she is forgotten by everyone she meets. And this book is just magical realism and it's mixed with historical fiction. And I think magical realism is very springy and this book just sounds interesting. So I put it on here. Okay. The final category, the final genre that I have is contemporary slash literary fiction. So the first book we have on here is Pineapple Street. So this is about a woman who marries a man and she really just feels like an outsider in this high society life that she's now living. And honestly, I don't exactly know why I put it on there. I feel like the cover shows spring and it just feels like a spring book. Then we have Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which I have read. I actually just read it this past January. So this follows the story of Sadie, Marks, and Sam. And they are video game designers. And it follows their lives from when they met when they were little kids to adulthood. And I think this, this represents art in a way that a lot of people don't realize and it showcases a type of art that doesn't get recognized very much I feel like and it, it showcases creating and just just trying new things and doing things outside of your comfort zone and I feel like spring is a very colorful and beautiful season and I feel like art is represented in spring and I wanted to add it on here the next book is Remarkably Bright Creatures. So this is about Tova who begins to work at an aquarium and she is working the night shift after her husband dies and her son goes missing. I chose this book solely on the cover. Just the fun colors are springy to me and the octopus is cute. The fourth book in this genre is Yours Truly and this is about Burana and her life and how it's falling apart and then she gets this letter from this doctor so this is a romance but i feel like it represents a lot more and when people talk about it i feel like they talk about it more as a literary or contemporary fiction rather than just a romance and i wanted to add it on there it it feels like it represents growth really well i'm not sure but it, that's what that's the interpretation that I get from hearing other people talk about it. And finally, the final book that I'm talking about for all these spring reads is In Five Years. So Danny has a five year plan, but she goes to sleep one night and she wakes up and she is five years into the future. And she's like, like I had a five year plan and now it's five years later. And this was recommended to be a spring read, so I just added it on here because, because they told me to. And that was the super quick version of over 50 spring recommendations with so many different genres. There's so many more genres, but I feel like I covered a good, a good amount of them that can categorize into other genres. And I'm really excited to read some of these. We still have time to buy them, so I might go out and buy some of these so that I can start reading them this spring. Um, I hope you got good recommendations. I got good recommendations doing all the research for this. Again, if you want more in-depth summaries about these books, I will link the Goodreads like tab that I have that has all these books listed in there. And um, 
as well as everything else. And that's it. I hope you have a great day. I hope you got a wreck. I hope you enjoyed. And that was Write Me in Film Spring Recommendations. Have a great day. Have a great spring day.